Hey everybody, I'm back again with another video. This time I'm covering my uh, electric XP electric bicycle. I got it about two weeks ago and of course time constraints, a bunch of stuff happened, but I was able to put a little bit of mileage on it and now I can give you a better review of what I think the pros and cons are for the vehicle. So let's go over some of the uh, good and bad things about the bike. So these handlebars on the bike are very, uh, they're functional and I can understand why they utilize them, but they're kind of short in my opinion. And so putting accessories on this bicycle is going to be a challenge. Now, as you can see here, I've already added an accessory bar because there really was no place to put a cell phone holder or a flashlight holder or any kind of exterior uh, aux devices that you would want to put on this bike. I feel that the handlebars themselves, although functional, are a little bit thin. And since they're curved in this area, and unlike it, like a mountain bike, which would have more of a straight bar, uh, have a little bit less room to put stuff on. So I had to get really, really tricky, get this accessory bar on here. And as you can see, it's not even that tight on here. I'm going to have to figure out how to get this mounted a little bit tighter, but it does the job for now. And in all actuality, I really don't need it to be that tight just to hold the cell phone on there. So we've gone over the handlebars. The other thing about the handlebars that makes them not as usable as let's say a mountain bike handlebar would be the length of the handlebar and these grips. Now these grips are perfectly functional, but they're a little bit, let's just say a little bit cheap feeling. They're rubber, they do the job, but I feel like I'm probably gonna wanna change those out and because of the fact that the handlebars are a little bit short, I'm probably gonna have to cut whatever grips, kind of like what they did, uh, in order to get those installed. So here I, I installed some uh, mirrors because going faster on the bike, you just feel a little bit more comfortable if you have some mirrors on there. That was perf perfectly easy to install, not a problem. Uh, as far as the brakes are concerned, they are functional, they are hydraulic, or I'm sorry, they are mechanical brakes, which makes them good or easy to work on. And I believe that they are decent for the price, although I've already scored them up a little bit because of the fact that right here, this was bent when I got the bike and I didn't notice it, was bent all the way towards the caliper and actually got caught in the caliper one time jacked up my brakes but I was able to get them out just lost the tip so I just put a little bit of uh, rubberized tape on there in order to keep it from fraying as far as the forks are concerned they're perfectly fine they work good and they are solid but I believe that they are steel forks and not aluminum forks so they give you a little bit more dampening quality the ride is all right I mean I could lower the uh, the air on the tires and if I wanted a softer ride but so far been pretty good the tires are concerned the tires are some brand some CST uh, CST BFT I don't know what brand that is exactly they seem to be all right they almost feel like a balloon to me though they're really really like thin so I've already had one tire lose air pressure on me uh, in the rear and had to pump it up again and I'm going to have to replace the tube in it. So don't expect these tires to be thorn resistant or puncture resistant because they're not. But they're perfectly fine for daily use. Just don't think that you can take it off road or take it in some pretty gnarly environments. These tires probably won't hold up. but. On street, they seem to be okay. The fenders are nice, although when I got them, these fenders were a little bit crooked. So I had to go and tweak the screws and adjust the screws here because also my light was crooked. So keep in mind, when you first get the bike, that you're going to want to 
check all the screws, make sure everything's aligned, straight, and tight. That's the biggest advice I can get, give you when you have this bike is that some of the stuff needs to be tweaked. That's perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable with this price point. As far as the seat is concerned, the seat is nice, although I already see a part that's starting to break free from the uh, seat itself right in here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, I, I believe it's like glued or something in here, but it's starting to, to come apart. But when you're sitting on it, it's not a problem. And the seat is pretty comfortable. So it has some good flex. Uh, I added this lock on here, so it does not come with that, but that's a perfectly good spot for a lock. Uh, the seat post is generous height. You can bring it up really very high. And it's a good size for a six foot tall person like myself. I'm 6'2", and the bike fits me just fine. I still have plenty of play to go up on the handlebars and up on the seat post. As far as the uh, chain guard here, it's a nice plastic chain guard. So it's not metal, uh, but it does keep your pants from going in there and getting caught up, so that works well. Right here is the uh, cadence sensor, and it works perfectly fine. Although I have noticed that there is a delay in the bike, so be prepared for that. It's going to give you an abrupt start and stop, and the uh, motor kind of has a delay, especially in the upper gears. So you'll pedal two, three, four times, and then it'll kick in. Uh, on the lowest gear, on one, it seems to have the most response. So I don't know if that's part of the speed controller and if they can change that or not, but that is one of the complaints I have with it. As far as the gears are concerned, they're, they're perfectly fine uh, for this style of bike at this price point. When I took the first ride, my fenders were loose. So if you bang on the fenders and they kind of rattle, you'll know that uh, these screws need to be tightened. They were also a little bit out of alignment, so I had to do that. Uh, the actual stem itself works fine. Everything here is, is pretty functional. The frame is, is nicely. As far as the rear frame, the rear frame was also a little bit out of alignment, and so was the rack. Uh, I, ha I had to bend some of it because in shipping the rack came a little bit bent so I, I did that also. The gears themselves although not super high end work perfectly fine they're all right if you want a new derailleur you can just replace the de derailleur and upgrade that. These are mechanical and they work well I haven't had a problem stopping the bike at all even going at pretty fast uh, speeds but one complaint I guess I have is that they do squeak a lot they are pretty noisy so when you're uh, hitting your brakes they do kind of grind and squeak I believe that that's not so much to do with the, the manufacturer but you know the Tecro, Tectro brakes themselves uh, and I have heard that you know it's kind of a common problem so I'm not going to blame uh, electric for that. As far as the frame is concerned, the frame is really well built, really good thick welds. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with the frame and the locking mechanism works great. Now, quick tip down here on the key switch here, the key must be inside the bike in order for it to run. So you have to twist it once in order to make it run and then you have to push it in uh, when you pull it this way in order to unlock the actual uh, battery. So you can take it out, you can put it in, and you can turn it on. So on is basically straight, this is off. So in the manual it was a little confusing. They actually sent a updated manual and uh, that corrected that. Uh, everything is just zip tied underneath the bike with uh, a little bit of a wire guard here. So it looks relatively neat and it's all under the bike so you can't really notice it. It does have a bash guard over here and the bash guard works all right. 
Although when I got it in shipping, the bash guard was actually bent all the way into the derailleur because the shipping hit it right on this spot. But it did its job. It pretty much kept the derailleur from getting any major damage. The This is plastic here and these are folding pedals. The folding pedals work okay, although a couple of times when I've slid my foot, these have actually snapped up and popped out of place and I've had to snap them back down. Usually when I'm stopped at a stop sign or something, I kick it, boom, and then it goes up. So I'm probably gonna change those pedals out eventually with some non-folding pedals and just take that loss of that little bit of uh, foldability for, I guess, a more sturdy pedal. The cranks seem to be okay. They work fine. I'm not planning on changing those anytime soon. As you can see up at the top, I did already put accessory bars and mirrors on, which I did because you feel much more reassured when you can actually see behind you when you're going at higher speeds. The gears themselves work fine. The bell works fine. It's, you know, not the greatest bell, but it, it, it was free, came with the bike. The menu or the bike turns on like that. You just hold down the M key, which is the menu key and you have a energy bar and your speedometer, your uh, pedal assist level, and uh, your mileage gone. And then if you just keep on tapping, you'll go through your trips, your voltage, your current, and how long it's been turned on. So that's pretty simple. You can go in and change it uh, into a level three bike by going into the settings. Uh, that is actually in manual that you can find how to do that. Um, I would suggest that you get another light because I've ridden this bike at night and this light just doesn't cast that much light. It's, it's decently bright, but not super bright and it is not a wide spray. So what ends up happening is you get a really narrow beam of light that pretty much looks right in the front of you, but doesn't provide a whole lot of, uh, light. It's just basically to tell people that you're out but not really uh, very good for night driving. Um, how you change the pedal assist levels, obviously, is you hit up arrow and down arrow, and then you got your standard shifter, which you can go higher or lower like that. So the throttle itself works well. When in zero, throttle's dead, and that's a good thing. Uh, I've accidentally hit the throttle when I've been pushing up the bike, and it will take off on you. So it's a good thing that you can do that. You can also hit, I believe it's the uh, down arrow, because if you just hold the up arrow, you turn on your lights. If you hit the down arrow, you will turn on walk assist. And that works well, uh, but for me, I, if I was gonna do it, I'd probably put it in one and then just be real cognizant of my throttle. Uh, the bike overall though has performed well. It's taking me up some really steep hills. I got some video of that that I'll show later of me going up pretty pretty good grades and I'm 230 pounds so and I'm 6'2 the bike has performed very well on the hills and I was able to get a 24 mile ride in on the bike and have about half my meter still left so and, and I was doing hills and doing trails and stuff like that the bike performed great in that respect so I guess some of the things that I would change on the bike. So number one, these handlebars, they're just, I would prefer them to be a little bit longer on each side and straight maybe, uh, so that you could have a little bit more real estate so you wouldn't have to add this. I would change the light on the front. The front light is okay, but not great. It's, it's nice to have a built-in light. I'm thinking of adding a light in, like putting a splitter on here and then just adding a secondary light up on my bar. Um, the tires, I'm really not feeling these tires because they're not thorn resistant. They don't have, uh, you know, that much tread on them. So they almost seem like you're, you're riding on a, almost a bald tire with just really low thin tread. I don't know if that's like an industry for fat, uh, standard for fat bikes, but that's one of the things that I'm probably going to end up putting thorn resistant either tubes or the, the actual tire itself. Uh, the front fork performs well. The fat tires actually do 
help with some of the suspension, but it's still not that soft of a ride. So I would suggest putting uh, forks on it or putting a suspension post on the back. Uh, there's really no way to make the rear suspension go. So that would be my suggestions for the bike. Maybe in the uh, XP2, maybe they're going to put some uh, forks and maybe a suspension post, but you can easily buy a suspension post. I think they're like a hundred bucks. Uh, the bags themselves that they gave me are functional, although they feel a little bit cheap. They sound a little bit cheap, but they are functional. They got pretty good volume. See, hear that? It almost sounds like there's a little bit of paper in there or something, but uh, they're functional. I got a jacket in there. I got some packaging in there. I got a tire inflator on the other side. So they are functional. They do sit on the bike decent and you can still put stuff on the rack if you wanted to but i'm probably going to replace them eventually just because they're not the volume i wanted actually i would like a little bit more volume and the material themselves is not that great but i got them for free so i'm not going to complain about those that much uh, the rear light itself is functional just one led in there so if you need more light or you want it to be brighter you're probably going to have to change that out too the rims seem pretty sturdy I didn't see any wobble or anything out of alignment on that and the brakes the brakes are decent although noisy so overall I like the bike I think it was worth every penny that I paid uh, you're not going to be able to build a bike like this for the money that it cost to uh, for this bike because the controller the motor and the battery are probably going to be 900 bucks without the bike itself and, you know and you get the display you got the gears you got the throttle you got oh and the other thing I forgot to mention is is that if you look up here you'll see that that is your uh, to cut off your motor so motor inhibitors on the front and back that's a safety feature and I'm really glad that they threw that in too so overall this is a really nice bike for the money but you're just going to have to keep in mind that since it's a budget bike, some of the uh, screws are going to be loose. Some of the things are going to be out of alignment. You're going to have to do a little bit of work on the bike in order to get it uh, perfectly set up or take it to a bike shop to get it perfectly set up. Hill. I'm just pedaling semi normal, not trying to gun it or anything. Doing 12 miles an hour uphill in four. Doing a normal cadence. And these are some big ass hills here. You'll see in a second. downhill so I really don't need assistance here See, I'd spin it once, it doesn't do anything. One, two, three, four, five. About five strokes or five cranks of the pedal, full revolutions, then the assistance kicks in. These are very big hills here, so this is a good test.
What's that? Yeah. Doing a slight grade here on five, cruising uphill at 16 miles an hour. As soon as you let off the pedal though, it kicks the motor off. It takes another five strokes to get back on, and then you kick back up. So the one thing I could say is I wish the shifts from on to off were a little more gradual and a little sooner on the on and a little later on the off. Well, actually the immediate off is fine. I can understand that. If you don't pedal, you probably want to slow down. But I'm handling these hills pretty easily. To throttle only uphill it's getting a little steeper I'm doing 16 miles an hour not that one wasn't a super big hill though as you can see there is no uh, suspension so hitting any kind of potholes or any divots in the road pretty much you feel it but the fat tires kind of buffer the real jar but still you, you do feel the road i'm doing 19 miles an hour pure throttle uphill doing about 18. and as you can see my energy bar goes up and down and then recovers as soon as I stop doing the uh, assist it uh, recovers and gives me full bars again and it'll do that uh, periodically through my testing I found that it's uh, going up and down kind of telling you you're using a lot of battery but when you're when you stop it kind of regain some of it so like if you turn it off and turn it back on after this ride which I've gone about three miles uh, it'll still show full bars it's kind of like it recovers it says pretty much you have 99% of your battery still but while you're doing it it will drop it down which kind of freaks you out a little bit Fre freak me out the first time I did it I thought Wow, I'm really draining my battery, but then I stopped doing it and then it recovered. As you can see, I'm back to full bars. So, going uphill. 12 miles an hour. With no momentum, very little momentum. Now I'm going 16 miles an hour because I had a little downhill. This is all throttle. Going uphill. Pure throttle. And as you can see, look at my energy bar. It's like you're eating energy, sir. slow down because of my turn in here okay see it dropped it went all the way back to 100 
but once again you can see i'm feeling the bumps although the seat is relatively comfortable and the uh the tires are soaking up a lot of it okay so you can hear it go on right about now I'm in the highest gear, full pedal assist, and I hit 20 miles an hour going uphill with pedal assist. Brakes are getting a workout for sure. So this is the American River Trail in Sacramento, California. A perfect place to go riding. It it stretches from downtown Sacramento all the way to Folsom, California and back. So it's like a 50 mile loop. Uh, but we decided to do a 24 mile, uh, I guess, route on this trail. And the bike handled actually really well. I was very surprised at how agile the bike is. Um, like I said before, I would prefer the handlebars to be a little bit wider because when you get into the uh, dirt and rocks, then you, know, you should have a little bit more stability uh, and the tires almost act like balloons. They're really bouncy. So when you hit like a big rock or something like that going down a hill, uh, you could possibly like jackknife or lose control. So I would prefer if the handlebars were a little bit bigger and maybe uh, some front suspension yep. shocks, that would be probably more advantageous for off-roading. But on this situation, on this type of road, the handlebars performed perfectly, uh, the bike performed perfectly, and it was a really nice ride. And uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit more of this ride and, and uh, show you how the bike takes the hills and the twisties. So let's go. Letting you know I'm still here. <laughs> All right, so as we go through the rest of this ride, I just want to go over some of the things that I like about the bike. What I don't like about the bike, my suggestions one more time, and then I will give you my overall impressions. So let's start off with some of the things I like. The motor is 500 watts and it's really pretty strong. Uh, I'm 230 pounds, six foot two, and the motor handled very well uphill for me. Now, if you're bigger than me or a little bit more heavier than me, it, the, it might vary and your mileage will vary uh, based upon your weight. Also, my wife, who's a lot lighter than me, got a lot more mileage out of the bike than I did and it easily was pulling her up uh, some of the steepest hills on pedal assist two and three, whereas I had to go to four and five to get the same speed as her. So there is a variant in that, but the motor seems pretty strong I, it, there is no brand name other than electric on it, so I'm assuming that they just get it rebranded and it's probably uh, another manufacturer that actually makes the motor for them. The seat is pretty comfy. Uh, I, I After the 24 mile ride, I could feel it a little bit, you know, uh, and I was a little bit sore, but not super bad. In the future, I might change the seat out, but for, for most rides that I do personally, the seat uh, worked fine. Uh, the bike itself does fold and it folds in a small, small form factor. I do like that to fit in the back of my car. I can fit two bikes, drive up to Tahoe or someplace that has trails also, and it will uh, easily fit in the back of my car. Um, the fat tires do supply good shock absorption especially if you air them down a little bit. 
I think I'm running like 25 in the front and 20 in the back, sometimes 25 in the back, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra shock absorption. And they seem to be running fine. I have to still mess with that a little bit. I do like the fact that they have mechanical disc brakes, which are easier to work on and have good stopping power, although they're a little bit noisy. Um, some of the things I don't like, I would say the handlebars, which I went over already, um, the grips could be better, and the uh, light in the front could be a little bit more widespread. I think that the location of the light is a little bit low. I wish they would have actually mounted it up maybe on the back side of the display or something like that, which would be a perfect location for a light and would be uh, and maybe make it much wider. So overall, my impressions of the bike are very positive. I mean, there there's the little uh, ticky tack stuff like the handlebars and the grips and all that. But this is a more affordable budget bike. And so they had to make some compromises in certain places, but they didn't compromise on the motor. They didn't compromise on the battery. The frame is solid and the folding mechanism looks like it's never going to break. Uh, the welds are really good. Um, everything functions on the bike as it was intended to. The screen is easy to read. Everything shifts now that I've adjusted the, uh, the derailleur. Um, and overall the bike is comfortable to ride and gives you the range that they said it would give you and uh, performs like intended. So on roads like this, this bike works out really, really well. If you're going off-roading, this bike would not be a good bike for you. This is not for mountain bikers. This is not for racers or downhill racers. This bike will not do jumps well, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm going to be testing it in the sand probably later this year and check that out and I'll give you guys an update on that. But overall, um, the bike is probably going to fit a lot of just casual bikers needs. It helps you when you have hills. If you don't have hills, you can get away with being on one and two all the time on this bike and that's plenty of assistance. I've even turned the assistance completely off and it doesn't ride that bad. Uh, the weight of the bike is a little bit heavy. Uh, so getting it in and out of the car is not super easy, but you know for uh, for a guy or if you have uh, two people It's no problem um, It does fold quite com uh, compact and it gets in the car easy and uh, The price of the bike I believe is fair for what you're getting you're getting a nice display You're getting a good motor you're getting good batteries uh, so I guess the real question is did I get my money's worth and would I buy it again? Well, in my situation, I had to get two bikes because I had to get one for me and one for my wife. And in that respect, I paid for both bikes $1,700. The bike I was originally going to get, which was the Rad Rover, cost $1,700 by itself. So in retrospect, looking back, I was willing to pay a lot more money to get a slightly better bike. I'm not gonna say this bike is better than that bike. I think that bike is one of the best bikes made for that price point. Uh, Juice Bikes also make some great bikes. They're $2,500. So I got my money's worth out of this bike. It's gonna get me into uh, riding more. I've got an electric bike now. I can take it camping and some of the things that uh, uh, or a little bit better about this bike is the the functionality of being able to fold it now juice and uh, the other bikes do make folding bikes the other bike companies also make folding bikes uh, but the price point on this is the sweet spot I believe that it's it's the most affordable bike with this good of a motor and this kind of a battery um, it's basically priced the same as a 36 volt uh, 250 watt motored bike so I think that this is going to help the industry come a little bit more down I know that rad already got a more budget bike that just came out it's not folding but it is a step through and it looks pretty cool and I would say that if I wouldn't have got this bike I probably would have got that bike especially for my wife because she uh, 
needs more of a step through style. She's not as tall as I am. So I think that this is a great option. I would recommend it to people who uh, don't want to spend a lot of money and don't want to get a, you know, a Chinese manufacturer that maybe uh, won't be there in a year or two. I think electric will be around longer, although we'll have to wait and see on that. Anyway, this is my review of the Electric AXP. I hope it was informational and that you guys got something out of it. If you stayed this long to watch the video, thank you very much. If you liked the video, please click like. If you really, really liked it, please subscribe. There will be more videos. I'm, I'm planning some trips to Fort Bragg and Tahoe. Uh, with this bike and I will let you guys know when I update stuff if I change out the forks or the handlebars or put a uh, Suspension seat post on it. I will definitely give you guys an update I'm also going to be changing the headlight probably out or adding another one So I'm planning to do some more stuff with the bike and hope you guys uh, Catch those videos also. Anyway, that's my video. Thanks for watching I'm gonna get the tech out of here later